Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, although it is getting towards 90 degrees today here on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon, April 27th in Austin, Texas, and uh, can't think of a better way to depress myself on a beautiful spring day uh, and to bring you today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And uh, I actually stumbled onto this story a few days ago. I might have mentioned it in passing somewhere in, uh, somewhere on YouTube, shall we say. But I thought that this one was a worthy of its own Chronicle of the Collapse. So we are going to head over to Yahoo News. Actually, we're going to go go back about five days for anybody not understanding this. This is this, yeah, yeah, just plain old Yahoo News on the mainstream media. It has already begun. Feedback loops will make climate change even worse, scientists say. There you go. When the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released its dire report in October warning of humanity's fast approaching reckoning with global warming, one factor adding to the urgency was a new estimate about how much additional carbon dioxide was being added to the atmosphere as a result of the arm the warming of Arctic permafrost. Can you say the methane bomb? <clears throat> With rising Arctic temperatures setting free a vast amount of carbon previously locked beneath the permafrost, which of course I now call the temperfrost, the additional greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere would speed up warming the report concluded, and that, in turn, will further melt the permafrost, otherwise known as the tempafrost. Permafrost does not melt. That is why it is called permafrost. So it is a contradiction in terms. Uh, Yahoo News editors are not aware of this to say further melting of the permafrost. No, further melting of the temperfrost. The more temperfrost melts, the more temperfrost melts, the more temperfrost melts. This is called a, uh, a feedback loop. For those of you not understanding what a feedback loop looks like, that is a feedback loop. I like how they have the, these pretty arrows circling an iceberg. <clears throat> okay. It is these feedback loops, like that one, meaning the permafrost uh, methane bomb, that makes climate change unpredictable and represent a threat of global warming spiraling out of control. This is Thomas Crowther, professor in the Department of Environmental System Science from somewhere over there in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. <clears throat> Quote, it has already begun. The feedback is in process. This is not something that is going to happen to your grandchildren, guys. The feedback loop is already happening. The toothpaste is out of the tube. Do you get it? Crowther estimates that carbon dioxide and methane emissions from thawing soils are, quote, <coughs> accelerating climate change about 12 to 15 percent at the moment, and said past 
IPCC reports that left out that feedback, quote, <coughs> were way more optimistic than they should have been. And of course, uh, doomers have been talking about this for years, that the IPCC in its already dire reports completely ignoring the melting permafrost for the first time ever in October of 2018. They said, well guys, there is one more little thing we should probably mention here at the end of 2018. Oh boy. But, but of course, it was buried in the report. Uh, anyway, almost every scientist studying the effects of climate change is worried about the extent to which feedback loops will hasten global warming. One of the most serious feedbacks is the albedo effect. As if you don't know, here we go again. This is the amount of the sun's radiation the planet reflects back into space, mostly from the polar ice sheets. The warming that has already occurred has begun melting the ice caps, leaving the dark ocean and land exposed to absorb solar radiation, not reflect it back. This is further warming the planet and leading to more ice melt. The more the ice melts, the more ice will melt. The more permafrost thaws, the more uh, permafrost will thaw. This is real, real uh, rocket science. Okay, let's hear from Jennifer Francis senior scientist at the Woods Hole Research Center who has politely declined to be interviewed by Sam Mitchell at uh, Collapse Chronicles. I guess Yahoo News uh, got Jennifer's attention unlike Sam Mitchell. Anyway, take it away Jennifer and explain this to us. Quote, the impact that it has on this, the albedo effect, the impact that the albedo effect has on making the earth darker by removing all the snow and ice is estimated by some to be 25 to 40 percent of the warming that we have experienced, meaning that we have experienced so far. In other words, global warming is that much worse. There's a lot of ways these things are totaled all together. Close quote. Feedback loops are not a root cause of the climate change problem, but they make the problem that much worse. When climatologists began seriously studying global warming in the 1970s, there was some doubt about how these feedback loops would operate. Scientists theorized then there might also be negative feedback loops which would slow global warming, for instance by decreasing cloud cover, but so far it has all gone in the opposite wrong direction. Yes, this back to Jennifer Francis, quote, I am not optimistic. It's just because of, it's not just because of those feedbacks. It is because we have already put so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that carbon dioxide lasts a very long time. A molecule of, of carbon dioxide on average lasts about 100 years in our atmosphere. So, we have not yet felt the impacts of the carbon dioxide that we have already put into the atmosphere. Even not thinking about the feedbacks, not even including the feedbacks, 
we are all we have already got a lot more climate change built into the system just because it takes a while for the climate system to adjust itself to this new level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. All the feedbacks that happen is just making that response even bigger than it would be otherwise." Close quote. Francis has been researching how rising Arctic temperatures have been weakening the jet stream, causing shifts in weather and ocean current patterns that, in yet another feedback loop, warm the earth and further destabilize the jet stream. This is why we are seeing snowstorms in Saudi Arabia on the same day that people in Scotland are walking around in shorts and t-shirts in April. The, the planet has completely flip-flopped. Getting back to Jennifer Francis, since she won't talk to me, we'll just have to see what she had to say to Yahoo News. <clears throat> Quote, What we are seeing is that the Arctic is warming much faster than the planet is farther south, making that north-south temperature difference much smaller, and so there is less of that fuel driving the jet stream wind. That should cause the jet stream to take more of these big north-south swings. And the reason that is important is because those waves in the jet stream are actually what create the high and low pressure systems that we see on a weather map on TV. And when you get those really big waves in the jet stream, like we're getting, they tend to move much more slowly. So those highs and lows we see on the weather map also tend to move much more slowly, and so the weather conditions we see on the surface associated with those weather systems are much more persistent." Close quote. This is called connecting the dots. Persistent weather patterns, such as periods of rain or drought lasting months, can have potentially devastating consequences," Francis, Francis said. Okay, now we're going to go talk to Harold Wanless. Harold Wanless, director of the University of Miami's Geological Sciences Department and a leading expert on sea level rise, has studied the rate at which the oceans have risen and retreated over millennia. He fears that a variety of feedback loops will contribute to a dramatic increase in sea level in the coming decades. Quoting uh, Wanless, quote, My work on ancient climate shows we have these rapid pulses of rise that are rather dramatic, up to 10 meters, 30 feet up to 30 feet of sea level rise, certainly within a century. And that's a really rapid disintegration of ice. We are just seeing the beginning of ice melt and the beginning of the warming of the waters reaching up to the Arctic in what is most certainly going to be the beginning of one of these rapid pulses, close quote. It's like rapid pulses and sea level rise. To Wanless, the evidence is clear that we have already reached a tipping point when it comes to the cascading impacts of climate change on sea level rise. <clears throat> Continuing the, uh, this interview with Wanless, quote, 
once you start adding up these different feedbacks, because that is the only thing we have to go on in the modern era, well, there are all these things that are speeding up ice melt, some of which we're just becoming aware of, like the collapse of the high ice sheets. We're just trying to figure out how fast and how dramatic this will be. Hmm. A lot of them, meaning the feedback loops, work together. The warm water getting in under the outlet fjords of Greenland and Antarctica that ends up detaching the ice from the substrate. And once that happens, you can have this sort of automatic fracturing of the detached ice like a stack of books starting to splay out off a table." Close quote. <clears throat> it is sobering to realize the extent to which the planet's ecosystem is interconnected. For years, relatively little was known about the vital role the Arctic played in keeping the world stable. As the permafrost has begun to thaw, however, the global ramifications have become unavoidable. This is Charles Coven, a research scientist in Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Quote, the permafrost acts like a giant freezer. The reason we have freezers in our kitchen is you put organic carbon in the form of food in your freezer and it doesn't decompose. Hmm. The same thing happens in the Arctic ecosystems. Plants grow and then die and form organic layers kind of like compost on the surface of the soil, and then, over time, that carbon gets mixed down deeper into the soil, where it gets locked into these deeper layers, where it gets frozen, and can stay frozen for thousands of years." Close quote. Well, until now. Coven is the author of a 2015 study that found that every one degree Celsius of warming, release, of warming releases from the permafrost the equivalent of one and a half to two years of human-generated global carbon dioxide emissions. Quote, when you have warming, it causes the layers of soil that thaws every summer to thaw a bit deeper. It's like taking stuff that's been in your freezer and putting it into your fridge. It doesn't last as long and it decomposes and then you end up releasing greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, and methane." Close quote. But of course, we have to find some hopium here on the mainstream media. No mainstream media article is going to end right there. Yet, Coven stressed that emissions from thawing permafrost were not in and of themselves necessarily catastrophic. Quote, the carbon that is released from the permafrost is not such a strong feedback loop. Nah, it's not such a strong feedback loop. It's more just that because you get this additional amount of carbon in the atmosphere with every additional bit of warming, that makes it that much more difficult to meet the kinds of climate targets that we would like to." Close quote. Okay, let's go over to Royson Comain, Assistant Professor of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Columbia University, has also been studying the thawing permafrost and was the lead author on the first study to show that Alaska tundra is now a net emitter of carbon dioxide. 
This is, all right, take it away, Ms. Cobain. Quote, Christmas Day, last year, the North Pole was not frozen. The sea ice is not freezing. The soils are not freezing. This past year, you know, 2017 to 2018 is what she's talking about, a lot of Alaska's North Slope and into Siberia never froze through. They had a very early snow which provided an insulating layer and those soils never froze and the amount of CO2 and methane coming out was quite high." Close quote. Unlike Wanless, who has witnessed firsthand the deterioration of the ice sheet in Greenland over decades, Comain has only recently begun traveling to the Arctic. Still, she has struggled with what she has found there and fears that feedback loops will only exacerbate the metamorphosis of that landscape. Quote, All of our preconceived notions of what should be happening are gone. I did not grow up in the Arctic, so everything I've, lear I I've been learning about is from what I have been reading, but then I go there and it is a completely different place. Yes, and uh, it is April in the Arctic. April, and uh, I guess uh, the Arctic is on full scale uh, melt overdrive. Uh, so anyway, there you go, guys. Uh, anybody who does not understand a, the, the collapse of a, a planet uh, can just tune into Yahoo News for your chronicle of the collapse for today. So I'm going to wrap this up here and uh, put together uh, my interview that I had with astrobiologist Adam Frank. Uh, I am very happy with this interview that I had last week with Adam Frank. You might recognize that name from NPR or the New York Times. So it took me, good Lord, eight months that I worked on getting this interview with Adam Frank, and you can be the first to hear it tomorrow. Uh, I will be posting the Collapse Chronicle interview with uh, astrobiologist Adam Frank tomorrow to see what is on his mind here in 2019 and I invite you to join me for that. But between now and then you need to do what I'm getting ready to do is get out here on this gorgeous spring day and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys.